Sometimes we feel helpless in the midst of the storm. Sometimes we feel when we're under attack, we don't have a lot to offer. May I say this, my brother, my sister? There's not a bad day in Christ. Some of you are saying, I don't know if I really believe that or feel that today. Well, that's my goal then this morning, is to show you a way that God is faithful in your life. God is still God in spite of everything you go through. I know you heard this, but let me say it again. Maybe you need to hear it again. Did you know that you may not be under the attack and, or the things that you're going through if something good wasn't about to take place in your life? You say, I don't know. I've heard that before, and here I am now. Do you remember Jesus? early on in his ministry. He was under some testings. I really don't necessarily want to go the temptation route, but he was under attack. By who? You know, there's only one force that's against you. You're not against yourself. God's not against you. You know who's against you? Your enemy, Satan. You see, Early on, Satan attacked Jesus. Jesus made it through. And you know what happened? He saw something good come in his life. Well, it says in the scripture that he, he started to preach that. Meaning, there was an open door for him. What I'm saying to you today is, weather the storm. God has something beyond what you're going through. What I'm saying to you is, if you make it through the trouble you're going through, the feelings you're feeling, as you come out on the other side, something is going to break your way. And the enemy doesn't want you to believe that this morning. The enemy wants you to think that it's hopeless it's not going to work out. The enemy is trying to sow things in your life. Tears, hardships, sow things in your life that will get you to doubt. You see, the enemy don't have uh, a strong weapon in his arsenal against you other than trying to persuade you to give up, to throw in the towel, to quit. You know what God's saying to you today? Be strong in the Lord. Don't doubt my faithfulness in your life. What God is saying to you today is, I'm with you. I've never left you or I will never forsake you. What God says to you today is, is that he will bring you out and in to a better land. Well, let's get to the scripture. It's known as the temptation of Jesus. I want to look at it a little differently. It's known as an attack. Maybe that's you today. Maybe you feel like you're under an attack, assault. Once again, I would say to you, that one, the enemy, once again, wouldn't be possibly fighting you this hard if something was just right around the corner. Well, our thought this morning is pushing back. You got to push back, my brother, my sister. What do you mean? Did you know you, you're pushing back right now? You got up. You made it to the house of God. You're pushing back on the enemy. You're saying, enemy, you might 
have tried, but I'm not giving up on God. And you're pushing back as you give him thanks. As you worship him, you're pushing back. Well, let me read a few verses here. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Wow, that's a tough one. You mean sometimes it's God that's leading us into the wilderness experience? Well, sometimes our wilderness, sometimes the desert, sometimes the dry times, there's purpose in it. You see, opposition can work both ways. The opposition in your life can be something that maybe God's going to use to help you to become who he's called you to be. I know we don't like it, but a thought for you and I. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Well, you're, listen, some of you have been through it. And there's going to be some effects. Jesus was fasting 40 days and there were some natural effects. Some of you have worked this week. Some of you have gone through some things and you feel weak. That's okay. Some of you have endured some things. Oppositions, relationship issues. Well, it's okay to be like Jesus. He was hungry. It's okay to be honest with God and say, God, I'm here, but I'm weak. I'm here, but I need you. About the best thing you could do is be honest with Jesus. Jesus already knows where you're at. He's been hungry before. He knows what it is to be in need, want. Well, the tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Oh, the opportunist tempter came at a weak time. You know when the enemy is going to attack you? When you're vulnerable. When it seems like it's a tough one. The enemy is going to come in and try to lure you away. The tempter. You know, the enemy came here, we're going to read it, three different times. The first time he's called the tempter, then he's called the, the devil, then it says uh, the, the devil again. What I'm saying is sometimes it goes from being tough to harder to it getting really hard. You know what that means in your life. But you know what I like about this story? The only really part that I like, and well, I shouldn't say the only, but on the other side of this coin, it says, and it's not up here, that Jesus came out of it and there was an open door. My brother, my sister. Did you know this week there may be an open door for you and you don't even know it today? Did you know there's something that may be coming down the pike right now and you're here discouraged, despondent, uh, feeling hopeless at times, wondering, but God is going to reward you for your faithfulness, for you hanging in there. Well, the tempter came to him and said, if you're the son of God, tell these stones to be come bread. Jesus answered, it's written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. Well, we're talking about pushing back. Will you push back on the enemy this week? Will you somehow say enough is enough? Remember that story where Paul, it says, went to the house of prayer? It's in the book of Acts. It was in the Macedonian region. Paul had high hopes and 
expectations. And he said he went to the house of prayer, but was met by opposition, a slave girl. Kept on harassing Paul and those. Did you know when you choose to do right, the enemy is going to attack you all that more? Paul went to the place of prayer. You would think that that's a righteous decision. There should be no opposition there. <laughs> the enemies fought you tooth and nail from coming to the house of God today. Why? Because the enemy knows that if you get God in you, you're going to change. You're going to find a, a tender heart. You're going to find that something breaks. The enemy knows that if you get to the house of God, anything is possible. You see, in the moment's notice, God can do for you what no man can do. Did you make the right decision? Yes, you did. Was it easy? Oh, I'm sure it wasn't. But what I'm saying to you is, go with God. He'll still help you when nothing else works. The enemy, his days are numbered. You, you're going to live forever in eternity with Christ. What I'm saying to you is, your life is a good life at the end of the day. Are there things that you're going to have to battle? Yes, there are. Are there things you're going to go through? Yes, there is. But there's no other life for you. There's no other way for you. You can push back on the enemy. You don't got to take every blow and every punch. What do you mean by that? Well, see, what I like here is that Jesus was under assault. And what did he do? He used the word. What did he do? He didn't give in. Some of you are going to be tempted to give in. Some of you are going to be tempted to say it's not worth it. But I say to you is, it is worth it. You are on the right track, the right road. You got to stay on it. I was reading in the scriptures, you've heard me say it before, but that in the final days, it's going to get tougher. You're going to go through, through some things you don't even understand. You can't even explain them. You see, the enemy is out to take out as many people as possible. You see, God wants you to get there to make it. The enemy doesn't want you to make it. And the enemy is going to throw whatever he can at you to get you to take that short, narrow road. But here's what you said. You said no to that. You said, God, I'm going to stay on this long, narrow road. I'm not going to take that short, wide road, but I'm going to stay on the road that you called me to. Does that pay dividends? It does. What other way are you going to take? You're going to go with yourself? That really works out. What other way are you going to live your life? You're going to cash in the chips? That's really going to work out for you. Many have gone down that road and ended empty. The road you're on is life. Where God is leading you is good things. You need to stay with God. You need to keep praying, keep getting up and forgiving, keep asking God to strengthen you. You need to push back against the attack. How do you push back? You know what I see here in the scripture? That Jesus I'm, was weak, hungry, struggling, 
but he used something that was stronger than him. Did you know that you can rebuke the enemy? You know that you could push back on the enemy with God's word? You're not helpless out there this week, by no means. God isn't going to give you more than you can handle. A matter of fact, God knows how long that you need to be in this, uh, this fire. Some of you are saying, God, take me out of it. I'm with you. But listen, God knows what he's doing in your life. He's the potter, you're the clay. He is over your life. We submit to him. Your job this week is to say, yes, Lord. Your job this week is to bend your heart towards him. Is this tough? Is it hard? Is serving God easy? Remember Joshua. Joshua said it this way to the followers. He says, if it's difficult for you to serve the Lord, he goes, I got it. But he said, he concluded, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. What I'm saying to you is I think you've concluded that God is the right way. I think this week we put the enemy where he belongs under our feet. I think this week we say, no more, Satan. You've come too far. You can't encroach upon my family. You can't take uh, uh, any more away from me. You've drawn a line. My brother, my sister, the attack doesn't last forever. It's a season. What you're going through will pass. The struggle, the hardship, it's not meant to ruin you. It's meant to bring you to a place that God has for you. That's hard to understand. How can I explain the ways of God? Sometimes only God can do that for you. The cross was a tough road. It's something that defied all imagination. But Jesus stayed there. He didn't move. He could have called 10,000 angels, but he hung there for you. Can you stay in the fight? Can you somehow say, God, not my will, but thy will? The world, I was going to say our nation, but it's not our nation. It's the world. God, I'm sure he thinks of nations, but it's the world. He gave himself for the world. The world is under attack. Satan knows that his time is short. And the world is under some things that is hard for you and I to really even comprehend sometimes. The world's under attack. So it comes down to, to it that are you going to believe God or are we going to believe what the enemy says? Here's what God says about you. God says that he will always be with you even to the end of the age. God says that you're going to make it through this thing. The enemy, you know, you've heard this, but the enemy is nothing more than a roaring lion on a short uh, uh, leash. Oh, he frightens you. He throws up some dust. He creates some stirrings in your life. The enemy, you get scared. That lion comes very close to you. And it seems like your life is over. But the enemy is on a short leash. He's a toothless lion. The enemy has been defeated on Calvary. All the enemy can do right now to you is try to scare you. 
create and plant fear in your life. Jesus said this in Isaiah chapter 8. He says, don't fear what they fear. Talking about the world, the people other than God, you're not supposed to fear things that God has already uh, uh, done and taken care of. Fear, it's a powerful force. Fear is something that rattles us at times. That's what Satan's uh, desire is, to rattle you. But you're here. And God is strengthening you today. You are going to leave out of here. I hope you stay for some lunch, if you can. But you're going to leave out of here more equipped. It's not going to be perfect. No one should lie to you. It's not going to be everything that you want, but let me tell you something. It's better than you know. And God is fighting for you right now. God fights for his people. God's been through it before. God knows what it is to be harassed by the enemy. God knows what it is to be attacked. And he's pushing back for you. Here's what I would do if I was you. I would keep trying. I would stay in the fight. Listen, remember the, the Rocky thing, you know, the boom, 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 those Rocky, what do they have? Rocky one, two, all of them. You know, sometimes Rocky felt out of it, didn't he? Sometimes if you didn't, the first time you're watching it, man, this guy's getting clobbered. Well, it's not this way, but in your life, it's a fixed fight. You win. You do. You win. What I'm saying, you may feel bruised and remember his face, black eye, everything, you know, blood. Sure. Are, are you bloodied up sometimes? Sure. Are you, do you feel the effects of the fight you're in? Sure. But at the end, what really matters is that when your hand goes up. And your hand is going to go up one day, my brother, my sister. You're the victor. So why am I saying this? I'm saying keep pushing back on the enemy. It is working in your life. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up too soon. You've heard me say when I was running cross country uh, uh, in high school, every time, every time I got on that line, halfway through, I wanted to fall down and act like I broke my ankle. Sometimes I wish I would have broke my ankle. That's how much pain when you're running and, 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 and competing. Sometimes I wish that I was thinking, my, my mind, I mean. If you've ever been through things like that, I was thinking, if I could only trip and, and somehow and to get out of this race, maybe that's what some of you are feeling today. But you're not going to get out of the race. There's too much at stake. Right after this, and I'm closing, Jesus begins to preach. What I'm saying to you is, there's something coming your way. What I'm saying to you is, there's an open door for you. My brother, my sister, God's promised you it from the beginning. There's an open door for you. Jesus endured. He resisted. He pushed back. And then God opened a door for him and a blessed, it was a blessing from his life on. What I'm saying to you is, it's going to be worth it. My brother, my sister, how do you know? You don't know what tomorrow brings. You don't know what can happen this week. Some of you feel like things have fallen apart a little bit here and there. This last week, well, what can God do this week for you? He could repair. He could restore. 
He can do something that man cannot do. So where's our hope this week? Our hope is in Christ. Where's our hope this week? Our hope's in God. Is God for you? He is. If God be for you, I'll say it again. Who dare be against you? If God be for you, my brother, my sister, you got a life before you. It's a good life. Father, touch, I pray. Father, the breakthrough, I pray. Help us all. Lord, help us all, we pray. The promise is there. When the enemy comes in like a flood, you raise up a standard, meaning you meet the enemy head on. So God, do it. We choose Jesus to be the one to fight for us this week. We too choose Jesus. So we love you and thank you. Let's say this together. Dear Jesus, I love you. I'm sorry for my sin. Come into my life. I make you my Lord and Savior. I love you. I need you. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, be with your people, I pray. Lord, help us all. Help us all. God, strengthen our hands. Strengthen your people's hands. Enemy, get under their feet. Get under our feet. Get under my sister's feet, my brother's feet. In Jesus' name. We break every stronghold in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together. Well, not bad, 1231. Let's lift our hands, can we?